Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Shabir Safi and in this video, we are going to install Istio Service Mesh on our local Kubernetes kind cluster and understand how Istio allows communication between pods in the cluster. But before you go ahead, I would recommend that you read a little bit about Service Mesh, Istio and its various components. And now let's get to it. So before we dive into how Istio's service to service communication works, it helps to understand at a high level how Kubernetes services talk to each other so we can better understand and compare how Istio does the same things but differently. In this example, we have two applications and one pod per app. And for each application, we have a cluster IP service. And most of us are familiar with this concept that when an application pod needs to talk to another application, it calls the cluster IP service of the other app rather than the individual pod running the application. Although it may seem that the service object is the one that forwards the request to the backend pod, in reality, that is not the case. Kubernetes deploys a component called QProxy that runs on each node as a daemon set. QProxy watches for service objects and their associated backend pods and generates IP table rules for request forwarding. So anytime a pod makes a request to the cluster IP service, it is first intercepted by the queue proxy and then it forwards the request to one of the backend pods. Now let's look at how Istio's service mesh works. When Istio is installed, it deploys its own control plane on the cluster. And like the previous example, here we have two application pods, but each pod now has two containers. One is the app container itself, and each pod has an additional Istio proxy container, or otherwise called a sidecar, that gets injected automatically when the pod is created. The Istio control plane configures all of these Istio proxy sidecars whenever it detects new services or if there is any change in the configuration. Just like how QProxy has IP table rules for services, the Istio control plane also configures these sidecar containers with its own routing declarations. So now these sidecar containers have all the information required for routing the traffic. So just like before, when a pod makes a request to another service, it first gets intercepted by its own Istio proxy sidecar container, and it redirects the traffic to Istio proxy container sitting alongside with the other app, and that container redirects the request to its app container. So you may have noticed that these pods which are using Istio proxy now no longer use the Kube proxy component. Now, the important thing to remember is that we are still achieving the same results without making any application level changes. But we are getting all the advantage of Istio service mesh like encryption, monitoring, and advanced routing, and much more. Okay, so now we are ready to go ahead and deploy Istio service mesh to our cluster and see it in action. All right. So let's go ahead and spin up our local Kubernetes cluster using kind. You can find the link to GitHub repo with the setup script and the video on my channel on how to set up the local kind cluster in the description box below. Okay, so the next thing we are going to do after creating our cluster is deploy a couple of applications. Nothing fancy. Uh, here we just have two nginx pods and cluster ip services to expose these pods so let's go ahead and deploy these and let's wait for them to be ready now to make sure pods are communicating with each other let's curl service a service B from service A. And we get a successful response, great. So this is the standard pod to pod communication through service objects and queue proxy. 
that we discussed earlier. And now let's go ahead and install Istio on our cluster. We'll use Helm to install the Istio components. So first, let's add the Istio repository. Next, we are going to install the Istio base chart, which uh, contains cluster-wide uh, custom resource definitions or CRDs, which must be installed before we install the Istio control plane. And last, we are going to install the Istio D, which consolidates the Istio control plane components. Okay, let's check if Istio D is up and running. Awesome. Now, let's check one of the pods we have deployed to see if it has the Istio sidecar proxy container injected into it. And looks like there is none. So let's fix that. To enable automatic Istio sidecar injection in the pods, we need to label the namespace with Istio injection equals enabled. And new pods that are created in that namespace will automatically have the sidecar added to them. So now, first let's delete and recreate our pods. And if we describe uh, one of the pods again, we should see it has two containers now, including Istio sidecar proxy. Nice. So if you're following along, maybe do not follow this step. Uh, this is just to demonstrate that our Istio setup is working and pods now can communicate with each other over the service mesh. So I'm going to delete the kube proxy daemon set from the kube system namespace, but it can break your cluster if you have other services deployed. So be careful. Now let's again try to curl from one pod to another one more time. And we get a successful response back, demonstrating that our service mesh setup is working. All right, I am going to recreate my cluster and redeploy everything real quick, and I'll see you guys in a second. Okay, so the last thing we are going to do now is install our monitoring stack, including Grafana and Prometheus, so we can monitor our Istio workload and monitor incoming and outgoing requests. Okay, let's uh, copy this command. It might take a couple of minutes for Grafana to be ready, so just wait for it. And let's go to our browser and log into Grafana. The username and password is admin admin. Let's go to the dashboard and click import. Now let's open up a new tab and go to grafana.com slash dashboards. And let's select this dashboard and uh, let's copy the ID and paste it in our Grafana dashboard and import. Okay, great. So we have this dashboard now, but there is no data populating at the moment. So let's send some requests from one pod to another. I'm just gonna make a few requests here. Um, and this should be good enough. Let's check our dashboard again. And now we can see the incoming and outgoing data populating in our services. All right, guys, so that is it for this video. 
Uh, in this video, I only covered the in-cluster communication between pods using the Istio service mesh. In the follow-up video, we'll look into how to install Istio Gateway to allow ingress traffic into the, uh, into the cluster and how it replaces Kubernetes ingress and provides a rich traffic management. So that's it for today. If you enjoyed the video or learned something new, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.